Hello, my name is Jim Crash Irons, Local 80 Grip here in Hollywood, California, and creator, co-producer, and host of That's a Wrap. I've worked on such movies as From Dust Till Dawn, Jackie Brown, Spawn, Peppermint, and such TV shows as Six Feet Under, Malcolm in the Middle, Weeds, and Big Little Lies, just to name a few. The vast majority of interviews at the end of Blu-ray discs and DVDs are interviews with the actors, the directors, the producers, the above-the-line people, as we call them in the business, the people with money, with fame. That's a Wrap is about the below-the-line people, the rank-and-file folks, the crew members who are on the set day in and day out, five to six days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day, dressing actors, building sets, lighting and shooting those sets, helping to create the dreams that Hollywood is built on. These are the magicians upon whom the magic makers rely upon. These are the folks who make the movies and TV shows that the public loves to spend buku dollars on at the movie theater or stretch out on the couch and binge on. My crew and I believe that you want to know about these folks, these talented, hardworking, intelligent folks, the professionals who get the job done because, well, it needs to get done. My sisters and brothers in the film and TV industry get to have their stories told, finally, and we'll tell those stories here on That's a Wrap. Hi, welcome back to another episode, and we are in with Patrice Turayan. To Ryan. Thank you, Crush. Mm -hmm. She is an on set medic uh, for film and television, and uh, we are here to interview her about her uh, life and times in the film business and community and such. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's great. How did you get a job in the film business as a medic? Um, actually, my stepdad helped me. Okay. Um, my family is in transportation. We for, always, for film mm, and TV. Yeah, for the film industry. And uh, he had always gave us the option if we wanted to be in transpo, and I did not do that. I went the EMT route and was working in urgent care. And anyway, he just said, you know, come with me. I'll get you a job. I'll help you get a job. And he did. For how long have you been a set Since 94, I believe, was when I did my first movie. What was your but first But I got movie? in in 95. Inventing the Abbots was my first movie. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, with Liv Tyler and Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It was a fun experience. Right? Yeah. Were you on set a lot? Because a lot of uh, medics, some they're, it's kind of specialized sometimes. There are some medics that are not on set. They are on right. construction crew right. or they're with the rigging crew. Uh, were you on? Were you on with the production with the shooting crew that first? I was. Yeah. I, I started out with construction first for a month, and then when production started, I became the production medic. Okay. So with not knowing what to do, or you know, just kind of winging it, learning, figuring out. You know, you you learn what to do by the people that you work with, right. the needs that they need. I guess is just the way to put it. Yeah. Right. No, you pay, you pay attention. Right. You. Keep your eyes open, your mouth shut, your ears yes. open, and you go along. Yes. Oh, that's true. Pay attention. Yeah. yeah. Is your father still into in the uh, business? Is My stepdad, no. Your stepdad, probably. yeah. He uh, passed away a couple mm. years ago. Okay. Yeah, but okay. no, he is not. But you are still here doing medic stuff. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Do you like it? Honestly, yes, I love it. I love it. I am a very nurturing person, anyway. So mm -hmm. I like being there. I like taking care of people. Um, I am always walking around making sure, and that's what's very appreciated by the crews that I work with, is that they know they're being looked after, um, and I do, I enjoy it. I like taking care of people, making sure they're safe and good and happy, and yeah. The last thing we want to know is, you know, or hear is medic, medic, right. you know, because yeah. someone's going to get hurt. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, if we get an aspirin or, you know, a little cut for, you know, Band-Aid, that's right. great, but we don't want you, we want you to sit down yes. in your chair. and I do, and read. And read. Uh -huh. <laughs> All day long. Right. Must be a nice job. Must it be is. nice of you, you know, uh -huh. to get that kind of work. Yes. Have you ever gushed at a, a star or an actor or a project that you're working on? Go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm working on this. This is really cool. Um, <clears throat> when I first got in, the second uh, show that I got was Liar Liar. Mm -hmm. So no, my crush is not Jim Carrey. <laughs> Sorry, um, but. Um, Ron Howard was one of the producers of it. Mm -hmm. And so he had come to set one day and that was very like, oh my gosh, like Richie Cunningham is here. <laughs> like it was so, so like bizarre of just like, wow, this is actually the type of job that I do that you're gonna see, you know, right. 
I don't know, idols or big stars or whatever. And so that was, that was very, that was fun. It was exciting. And I was shaking. I was nervous. Not that I would ever talk to him, but right, I mean, it was right. just, it was, it was fun. But um, I think my favorite show though that I worked on is The Office. That was a lot of fun every day. It just every day going, it loved waking up, didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to get out of bed. It was, yay, I get to go to work today. And, right. You know, laugh all day or, yeah. Well, see, well, that's nice when you have a job that you really, that, that, mm -hmm. that's fun to, to be, you want to go hang out with those people. Right. You want to see those people. Yeah. Uh, because we work such long hours mm -hmm. in this business that uh, you don't want to be with people that you don't like. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, hour-wise, we do work long hours. Mm -hmm. You have children. Yes, five. You have five kids. Mm -hmm. Have the hours affected your life adversely? Uh, just be not being able to see your kids or hang out or right. see them go to school or certain or plays right. or whatnot. I think that <clears throat> when you ask me, do I love this job? I do. But the hours are very hard because of that. Being right. a mom and wanting to always be there with my kids. My kids were in sports and you know that kind of thing. So Luckily, I worked with crews and producers or UPMs that understood that I was a mom first. So if there was something that was happening with my kids, I would take a day off. The thing that's different for medics versus everybody else on the crew, there's more than one person generally in the other departments, like a minimum of three people, let's say, right. in, in a department. And someone can say, hey, I'm going to be an hour late, you know, because my kid's getting an award. And then I would, I would be there, you know, with them. But I also, every morning uh, before I went to work, put all their snacks and lunches together and on the counter so they know whose was what, left them notes and good luck on your test or good luck on, you know, whatever. So they felt my presence. I was there, but, yeah. but not always physically there. So that's, <laughs> that's the bummer part about the job. <laughs> right. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, but that's being, that's being human. That's nice that you have that you're able to deal with the hours and the mm -hmm. kind of the craziness of this of this job and still have a family, still right. have uh, right. love and life with your with outside yes. Yes. Yep. of this of this business. Yeah. Do you like movies? Oh, I love them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love them. Yeah. 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 So you're excited to get the, you know, when you say, oh, okay, I'm going to be a set medic and not just, you know, put band-aids and, you know, and take care of people, but I'm actually working on on TV shows and films? Um, I, I guess, honestly, no, not so much that way. Cause I, and I know this sounds really weird. I'm not into the creative process of it. I'm into, I, I want to be entertained by it. So I'm not, you know, no offense to everybody else's job. <laughs> I'm not like, oh, that lighting was wrong or, oh, right. you know, you could see the boom in the shot or whatever. I don't look at it for that. I look at it to be entertained or, oh, the glass was on this side, but here it's now, or, you know what I mean? It, I, yeah. I just want to be entertained. Um, but what it did teach me, like I worked on Charmed, and I remember watching a scene where it was like, oh my gosh, I was hiding behind that couch <laughs> when that was being taken. So right. I had to learn to not be on set so that when I actually watch it, then it looks real to yeah. me. So, so it doesn't ruin <laughs> the, the illusion. Correct, if I'm not actually physically watching it. I can't see creatively what, whether it be the director sees the writer, whatever they see, I don't see that when they're performing on, I don't see that. <laughs> so I'd rather see it finished and on my TV or on the big screen. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. But you don't uh, spend so much time on set. You're more, as a medic, you're more, you're more off to the side. We're like, we're right here, everything's, yes. we're yeah. shooting the cameras here, blah, blah, blah. Right. You're not here, you're down a ways, you're a block or so away. I mean, you're close enough so right. something happens, right. but I'm you don't have to be. I'm not that far away, because yeah. that's too far. Right. But like, if you're actually on set, what I was first told was, um, and it was actually by my stepdad, um, was to stay by sound. To stay by the sound department because they're gonna, they're always out of the way, <clears throat> and then yet you're close enough to the set. Um, but as time went on, um, I, I don't, I, I now just kind of isolate myself mm -hmm. and stay, I don't want to stay away from everybody, but just kind of visual, to, you know, where everyone can see right, me. But, right. but yes, enough out of the way to where, yeah, that I am by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you're a, you're an army of one anyway. Yes, yes. Of being a medic, as you said, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just you. Yeah. That's yes. there. Yeah. Yes. So we are just one. But you on do set. want to 
have people know I, I'm here. I'm here. I'll be oh, over yeah. here. Yeah. If you guys need me, I'll yeah. be right here. And if I'm new to a crew, I walk around. I introduce myself to most right. of the crew, especially to the first AD, and I make sure to say their name as well to right. each individual person. Right. I it's, do. It's nice to make that connection. Right. With people, so they know, they get, so they right. have a yeah. Well, yeah. So, you so know, they, they don't they just yell oh, medic; wow. they have right. Patrice. Yeah, we know she is. Yeah. yeah. Where did you go to school for uh, medicine? Uh, it was actually um, I went to uh, an EM, the EMT program at COC mm -hmm. at College of the Canyons in mm -hmm. Valencia. Okay. Yeah. And how long was that? Oh, the course or how long ago? Because <laughs> it was a long <laughs> time ago. Uh, the yeah. course itself. The course uh, itself. It's a semester. Okay. So what is that? Four months, I think, something at like college, that. something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I took anatomy and physiology first. Um, I had also was working in an urgent care, and it all just kind of interests me, you know, just being there, taking care of, you know, again, taking care of people and helping people. Um, and then uh, what we have to do, though, as if you stay working as an EMT, um, you have to do your um, certifications every two years. Okay. So, um, where you get tested on your skills. So, uh, whether it be medical skill, trauma skill, pregnancy, if you need tourniquets, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we get tested on that every two years. And we have to do 24 units of continuing education every two years. And I'm not gonna lie, that part's a little stressful because we don't, as a, as a set medic, um, as you pointed out earlier, is that we do a lot of sitting. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, and, I, I didn't mean to put it yeah, down. No, 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 no. It, it's it's not at all. It's and it's again, true. we don't want you doing right. anything. Right, and yeah. that's it. We they don't want. It's a bad day for production if we have to actually right. work. Um, but you know, we don't get tested for the national registry for passing out sunscreen or Advil or whatever, which is what we do on set. And um, so that part for me, honestly, is a little stressful because I'm not utilizing my skills right. every day. But it's I, nice that you have that. Yes, that yes, because it keeps us in check and yes. you have to keep on it, so that's good. Even though we're not using it, you don't lose it, right. so to speak, so so it's good that we're tested. Just so that everybody else knows, we are. <laughs> we have to stay tested. <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and the, I'm sure the whole uh, COVID thing has been a bit of a, a, bit of a stress. It, it is <clears throat> about being a little bit more um, diligent and making sure that other people are being diligent. Um, they have that COVID team though, that right. is also making sure that people are apart and that kind of thing. But, but just more about. Do they make, did they make you, uh, take any extra classes because of all this um, that's been going on or, no, or it's more, it's more, it's the, more the team, the, the, the team is doing, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. just doing your own, you're still, right. your own they still thing. have us doing our own job and they right. have the co yeah, COVID people. Do it. We had to take that same thing that everybody else did. Right. To watch that video right. thing. But, yeah. Which was a lot of fun. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get that hour back. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't want that hour yeah. back. <laughs> Do you feel respected in the sense that uh, of what you're doing on, on the job, of the, in the film business? Do you feel like people say, yes, I'm glad this person's here? Um... That's kind of a tough, tricky question. Isn't it? It is. My mom wrote that down for especially, especially for you. So. <laughs> well, tell her thank you. <laughs> um, for the most part, yes. Yes. So you you um, do feel respected? Me personally, yes. I, right. I think sometimes though, honestly, for our department, there just like every, every crew, every job, every whatever, you have those sour apples. There are some that don't do their job, I feel, as good as they should be. Um, so there's some of us that give the medics the, a bad rap, you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but I also feel sometimes on above the line, we're not as appreciated as other departments. I, I do feel that. I think some, right. but that again, that's not every above the line person, but um, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what I want to say. You can say what, you know, I, if it's, if it's, I we kind can of always feel like what they want to do is they try to save the budget with the medic is what I'm saying. Okay. Is that it's, you know, oh, if we can do away without having a medic in this certain area, then that's, then that's what You're we're going to, then that's what we're going to do. Now, do you feel that also, do you feel that sometimes you are uh, uh, discriminated because also because of your sex, because of being a woman? Oh, no. You've never felt that? Mm -mm. 
Well, that's good. Nope. That's good. Yeah. Because you do hear it sometimes from uh, friends of ours that are, you know, uh, female grips uh -huh. will get that. Female electricians will get that. Right. And just want to make sure that, you know, sometimes it's like uh, just because they're a woman, just because they're engaged, because they're black. Right. They're, they're doing their job. Right. Right. So, you know, respect that. I always that. look at them, though. If I see a woman as a grip or an electrician, I'm mm -hmm. not kidding. Or even on this last show that I've been on, there was, I have never seen a woman actually work as a prop maker. And, and she's a cute, tiny little thing. And I'm like, God, wow, like badass, you know? And I think that even about women that are grips and electricians, because that is very physical work and very heavy equipment and very, you know, and they're schlepping it around all day with the men. And it's just like, you go, you know? I mean, right. and even in camera, you know, I mean, that that equipment it's is a really lot of, heavy it's too. A lot of heavy, yeah. Yes, it's a lot so of work. I have a lot of respect for women that are doing heavy work. <laughs> you know? I do. It's like, wow, that's great. It's no, it's a, it's yeah. a lot. It's nice to see, you know, it's nice to see that's nice to see people give them respect. Right. You know, it's, uh, oh God, those girls shouldn't be able to do that. But all of a sudden, you know what? They can. Yeah. They're probably doing a better job than you are. Yeah. Sometimes. So sometimes. yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever done any work in the film, but in your capacity as a medic, uh, uh, outside of the, uh, country? Oh, like actually working as a medic yeah. outside. No, I did go to Jamaica once though as a stand-in. <laughs> did young. you really? I did, yeah. When was this? Uh, I think I was 18, so 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> why are you laughing? I, I, yeah, you, you, you didn't you're believe so that? You're so okay. beautiful, you're so um, beautiful. No, it was, uh, I was 18, went to Jamaica, and I was a stand-in for, of all people, because I look so much like her, um, Karina Lombard. Don't I look like her? She's got dark hair, olive skin. I can totally see it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. I got to go to Jamaica for six weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was nice. That was fun. Yeah? Yeah. That's pretty damn good. Oh, and I was Ooh. Rebecca De Mornay stand-in, too. Oh, I wonder. Around the same time. That was called An Inconvenient Woman. It was, I believe oh, that. that was a highlight for me, too. You know what? I had to lay on top of Jason Robards. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. Were you guys clothed or? Yes. Oh my I, God, that would have been asking, creepy. I was asking. <laughs> Although, He's a great another, guy. He's a great no, actor. No, that was another thing that I was really excited about. That's, that's actually another highlight hmm. for me was like on, on top, top of, of Jason, Jason Robards. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because I grew up, I love that Something Wicked This Way Comes. By the breaking of yeah, my thumbs. Uh, gosh, I love that movie. And I was just like, oh my God, you know. Anyway, that's too funny. So, yeah. I just watching on. a movie with him the other day, and that's funny that you would bring that up. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he's yeah, he's a good actor. He's a damn good actor. Yeah. What are you working on now? Uh, the very controversial guest lit. Oh, with who's in there? Julia Roberts and Sean Penn. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, are you? I mean, is that still? You guys are still shooting, or? Yes. Yeah, that goes until uh, the middle of October. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah, started filming in May. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you start right off the bat or? Yes. Yeah. I started in April with construction. Okay. You know, started doing that first and right. then went, and then when, you know, production started, moved over to production. Right. right. But I'm on a little bit of a time off right now. And yes. yeah, and I appreciate you being yes. here in your time off. That's yes. very nice. Me too. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> what is it that you do during the day when, once you get to set until they're wrapped and you go home. What is, what is entailed? If there's nothing really, even if something happens, somebody cuts their hand or right. whatever, so. Um, so you get there in the morning. I get there in the morning. Um, I'm basic, well, it depends on what you're filming for the day. Mm -hmm. So if you're, let's say you're outside, um, you wanna make sure that you have, whether it be enough sunscreen, you wanna know what the temperatures are gonna be. You, you know, so you wanna have sunscreen, you wanna have electrolytes, you wanna, be proactive. You want to make sure that your crew is drinking water, um, and pass it out if if need be. I mean, instead of just expecting them to do it on their own. I mean, I I'm more of that. Be proactive because if if I'm doing a little bit of extra, then I'm preventing whether it be a heat related injury or someone being dehydrated or whatever. You right. know. Um, so um, it's again about being diligent. So um, so it's it's mostly that kind of thing it, as far as. I feel it's about paying attention what you're filming that day. If you're going to be filming stunts that day, you want to make sure you have enough ice packs or ace wraps or, 
you know, some sort of splinting device, you know, that kind of thing, so that you are ready for potentially what might happen. Right. Um, uh, if we're working on a stage, um, that that's kind of more of an easier day, depending again on what they're filming, though, on on the inside. But you just want to be prepared, look at the call sheet, see what they're filming, and be prepared for that. Um, but I am there typically from the first call, like makeup make a pair first call until you wrap and and then until all the working departments grip you know grip electric camera sound uh, props until they're you know they're all wrapped up and have their trucks closed then I can go so set medic has a long day yes you're there as bright and early as mm -hmm. almost before everybody else is there right. and you're there almost until, after, the end. until everybody's yeah. gone the only one that works longer than medics typically is transpo. Because right. they're there even sooner than makeup and hair to make sure base camp is up and running. Right. And then, yeah, they can't leave until production's until out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours. Yeah. It's and a lot we of hours. appreciate the heck out of you. Thank you. It's very nice. You do I great like work. I like taking care of everybody. You're, and you're <laughs> damn good at it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, is there any? Because then it goes back again to the whole water thing, but right. yes, yeah. Was there any episode on any film or any show that you worked on where uh, you helped prevent someone from getting hurt, or somebody got hurt, and you were able to not necessarily save their lives, but maybe right. save their lives or help them out immensely because they were bleeding or you know they were passing out from heat? Um, well, again, I go. I try to be more preventative, but yes, there's well. I mean, I don't know if you want me to talk about an actual injury. Yeah. I mean, because I have, you know, sadly, I, I did have a death on set, um, on. on a construction set. And so that was very hard. But, and there wasn't, and it wasn't just my efforts, you know, 911 came. There was a lot of work done for this individual. And sadly, it just didn't work. Um, and that was very hard. Um, but uh, other, um, injuries, um, I've had saw injuries with hands, you know, and um, where, you know, you just, you know, they come to you, of course they're scared, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to stay calm for that person or even for the rest of the crew because they're looking at you to kind of save the day. Oh, yeah. And if you're the one that's panicked as well, that kind of doesn't work very well. It's, yeah, it's a little um, so, um, but anyway, saw injury came to me, um, and it was a table saw, and um, and I could tell that the that the blood had already like coagulated; it was already you know clotting and stuff. So instead of cleaning it, which would have made him bleed more, um, I just wrapped it, send him on his way, you know, with Transpo, because Transpo is the one that can transport uh, our patients to facilities. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, there, there's things like that, or um, working in the heat uh, three summers ago, 2018, out at um, a ranch in Santa Clarita. And it was 115, 100, anywhere from 105 to 115 for wow. almost the entire summer. It was really? really hot. And I was working for somebody else. I was recommended for this job by a good friend of mine, recommended me to just someone. And uh, I wanted to... I knew that my job reflected on her, so it's, and me as well, but I wanted to make her look good. Oh, and definitely, so, definitely. Um, anyway, it's it's about being proactive. These guys in construction, they're not gonna get down off of their ladder and stop building that wall to go drink you know, some water. So I was walking around everywhere, filling all of their, re, you know, their water bottles, uh, making sure they were drinking, had made sure they had sunscreen on every day, made sure the electrolytes were all around and all of that. So it's also too about being preventative. I did not have one heat related injury that entire summer. That's so terrific. I think that is terrific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're yeah, there, I do say so myself. Yeah, I mean, we oh, were there great. from July until September, and you know, fil building, mm -hmm. and I did not have one heat-related injury. I did not have anyone go down. I did not have anyone. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's yeah. what being a good set medic is all about. Right. Well, then it is because it's about seeing what the crew needs and being on it. And you know, they were working out in the heat, and I stayed out in the heat with them. And this is what I'm saying too about how there's certain, you know, bad apples everywhere that they were saying that someone else was staying in their car. And I'm like, well, if I'm in my car with my with the air conditioning on, 
staying cool, how do I know what, if you guys, they're, what if feeling. you're feeling in this heat? Right. You know, so I'm right. like, if I'm feeling it, you're feeling it. Right. And so I'm like, if you're out in it, I'm out in it. I would be there too. Yeah. A good leader leads from the front. Yeah, yeah, good I agree. On good yeah. on you. Thank you. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> I mean, I've had other injuries, but you know, <laughs> you just, sure. you fix them up and Patch them up, send them on their way. Our guest has been Patrice Turan. Yes. <laughs> Troyan. Patrice thank you. Troyan. You did it. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, honey. Uh, you've been oh, great. Thank it's, you. You're right there. Yeah. Oh, get the medic. Where's I, the medic? I need a band aid for my thumb. <laughs> Cover up my um, non nail polish. She's been here. She's been our guest. She's been awesome. Um, and again, thank you very much. Yes, thank and, you. Um, we will see you on set somewhere. <gasps> yes, I hope so. Hopefully, just sitting down and reading. Yeah. And we'll all drink a lot of water. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Crash.